Cheers. Cheers. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my God, look who it is. Hello. It's Hi, Gabby. Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Gabby, but maybe you don't know. Or maybe you do know Gabby, if, you're, if maybe you do, probably. We'll see. It's a small we'll world. <laughs> but uh, welcome to Layaki Coffee Chats. Thank so, you. So thanks for coming, Gabby. Can you tell everybody who you are? I know such yes. a, who do you want to be seen as? Oh, that's a good question. That's a that's, big question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go, I just start right in. I just go right in, Gabby. Um, okay, so yeah, my name is Gabby uh, Brockman, last name. Um, <laughs> I work for Cielo, that's how we know each other. Um, and basically I um, work there and help people who want to start a small business and kind of work as a consultant or just a, um, hopefully a, a constant supporter for our clients to help them reach their business goals and feel like they have someone there to encourage them and, and to help them keep moving along with their business. Okay. So that's what I do for work. Okay. And then, and then, uh, <laughs> and, then um, and that is great work. That is also great work. Oh, but, but, but also, yes. Also, um, <laughs> I recently graduated, um, from my master's program at Palo Alto university in June. Thank you. Um, I was in a, uh, counseling program, uh, and an emphasis in marriage and family therapy. <laughs> love, 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 love. <laughs> yeah. So I graduated there recently and then am like in the process of hopefully becoming an associate therapist is what it's called to then like get all your hours to become licensed. You're doing your first hour right here on the tortas. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. No, seriously though, I told Gabby, I was like, you need to get on my coffee chat and I, and you can like treat me as a, like you can totally like ask me whatever you want. Okay. I'm, I'm very open as people may already know mm -hmm. about, you know, therapy and how open mm -hmm. I am about my experience because I feel like reflecting and understanding who you are is um, really the key to living the life you want, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so. Happy to have you here. Congratulations. You. I'm very excited. Gabby like said yes immediately. And then she was like, I know exactly what I talk, want to talk about. Cause mm -hmm. usually I like, you know, the process is I usually like talk to people and kind of understand, like they tell me a little bit about who they are and this and that. And I kind of like decipher, oh, okay, I think this is an area, but Gabby went right to me and was like, I know exactly what I want to talk about today. So I'm going to let Gabby kind of introduce to us what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. And you can sh and share why, why this yeah. is of interest to you. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> let's dive right in. Let's get into it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think I was just compelled to talk about this topic just because it's something that I always find interesting, all psychology stuff, but, um, so what I brought to you mm -hmm. and you said that you hadn't like, like learned about it yet or mm -hmm. heard of it really, mm -hmm. it's, which is something called attachment theory. Um, and so it's a theory that is talked about in um, grad school training for counseling and then uh -huh. for therapy. Um, the founder is a, a guy named John Bowlby, um, uh -huh. just in case you wanted what up, John? a name Thank attached you. to is it. Is he still around? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But um, so basically it's like it's this theory that like looks into um, looks into each individual person and how they're able to kind of accept love and give love and feel connected um, and safe with, you know, either romantic relationships or friendships or just people that are within their life. It could be family as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's looking at like basically how you are able to kind of feel connected and form attachments with people in a way that is like safe and healthy for you. And so there are like different kinds of forms of attachment and um it's really helpful to understand um kind of where you lie kind of maybe in your attachment style because it can help help you understand like who you are as a person like mm -hmm. what your needs are and maybe help you understand like the history of how you've received love in the past and like what kind of love you really need or the form of connection you need to make you feel safe so mm -hmm. it not only like helps you understand yourself but it helps you um understand a little bit better like what you need to ask for in terms of all different types of relationships and then also like you could also learn about the attachment style of your partner as well or the people around you to better understand them and hopefully have um more like safer happier relationships with them 
I love that. And you know, I obviously did a little bit of research because like Gabby said, I had not really heard about it. So I've, I've done a little bit of research and let me tell you, you know, I know people get obsessed with like horoscope signs. Like yeah. what sign are you? It's like, yeah. we're changing, we're like, get that, we're changing the game right now. You're probably going to ask people like, what is your attachment style? And then you'll really understand who they are. Because yeah. um, I think it's, it's, it's fascinating. And uh, uh, before we go into, I do want you to share like what those four attachment styles are mm -hmm. to kind of level set us on this conversation. But mm -hmm. for you, like personally, mm -hmm. why, what is it about this topic? Mm -hmm. Like, what is it, what do you, what do you find fascinating? Gabby? Yeah. So what I find fascinating <laughs> about it is, well, so more recently I really kind of grasped, uh, grasped onto it. Okay. And I think it was because like all of us, we get into relationships and then we <laughs> kind of reflect on our time in that relationship. Yeah. Like if we're still in there, if we're not still in it and maybe some ways that we feel like we could have like felt safer wanted to feel safer some things that were yeah. missing or some things that were like really important to us and our values and so for me like this theory helped me or understanding like my style and understanding this just really helped me understand myself a little bit better in in a way where so often when you're in a relationship you're kind of just like in it you're never at like that bird's eye view right so mm -hmm. where you can like kind of have that like yeah. separation and like see like oh this is what's happening this is how it's making me feel this yeah. is like connected to something that has happened to me in the past and like so maybe this is how i need to ask for it right and so i think for me it provided a little bit more of a map to understanding myself and what is important for me when it comes to relationships and what I need to ask for in order to just feel happy and safe. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. I mean, I think um, uh, that is, um, a, you're, I mean, to be honest, that's very mature. It's a very mature, um, healthy way of looking at yourself and relationships. I think oftentimes, like you're saying, we don't really think about we just think about the relationship and like we just go away yeah <laughs> you know because yeah. like when you told me immediately when you said attachment style is like how can one not think about their past relationships mm -hmm. and what that how, you know why they got into them why they stayed in those relationships um and ultimately why you you know people break up and all that stuff so right. i think this is a very universal topic so i'm very excited to just dive in it makes total sense mm -hmm. i think um uh, I think we're going to teach, hopefully teach some people some really cool things on how they can sure. look at their own relationship or the relationship they're seeking. Yes. Because <laughs> I always like to talk to those single girls and be like, hey, you have a <laughs> great opportunity right now yeah. to set things right for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so this mm -hmm. is really good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's start with what are these attachment uh, mm -hmm. styles? There's four. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a little pop quiz. I think we're, I'm, sure. we're going to go back and forth and you can correct me if I'm wrong about it. Okay. That sounds like fun. What do you think? Yeah, I like it. Okay. So you kick us off. What's okay. the what? That's number one. Okay. I hope you don't choose the one I want to. I'm talking about. Go, 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 go. Let's see. Okay. So, I guess, do you want me to, like, describe it and see if you can name Ooh, it? Oh, yes. Or? That's even better. Yeah, okay, that's even better. Okay. Okay, yeah. All right. So, I guess I'll describe... <laughs> I'll describe... Okay, I'll describe someone who... Um, oftentimes, this is a person... It's, it doesn't have to be just within relationships, but someone that is um, feeling confident in who they are and their identity and they understand their emotions and they're in, in tune with their emotions and how to possibly ask for what they need um and so within a within a relationship they're able to kind of um take a step back and um feel like they can be emotionally vulnerable and they want to connect with someone and then they can also um be grounded when they're trying to ask for their needs or trying to reach for connection they feel like they want to be loved and they also know that they can give love okay so now i'm going to i know exactly what it is okay. but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say okay so I'm, I'm going to relate it to myself. Let's just say that, yeah. for example. So let's say I'm in a relationship where I'm like, you know what? Something's really bothering me about mm -hmm. my partner. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't care if I tell them because I'm not afraid if they push back on me or if they get mad at me because mm -hmm. I am secure enough to mm -hmm. know that they, that my intention is well and I know that they're going to 
work through their stuff and know that ultimately they they they, they want what's best for me there's there's true yeah. trust yeah so uh i'm gonna say that's in a, a secure, a secure attachment. attachment yes great job you did it <laughs> yeah and, and this is a great way actually because there's so many people out there who are so afraid to like confront right that word confront i don't even mm -hmm. know if that's the right word confront their friend confront their partner and be like you know what i'm just like not gonna tell them because i don't want to deal with that fight or i don't want to deal with that mm -hmm. what um what is that fear all about you the think fear well i think oftentimes um it's a myriad of things but like um i think it has to do with like fear of maybe like being abandoned like if you share what mm -hmm. is troubling you like and you come to them with something that is concerning you like you fear that like they'll abandon you when you kind of become vulnerable or kind of open yourself up to mm -hmm. just all of the scariness mm -hmm. of like being so close to someone. So fear of ab abandonment, um, probably like um, also there's a fear of maybe being a little bit, uh, feeling like you are coming at someone in an overwhelming space, mm -hmm. like maybe you are too much or like you- That sounds so familiar. <laughs> Feeling like they're too much. Like, that like, resonates with like me a lot. Too much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, like within society, um, like oftentimes there's this, there has been this kind of like belief or red or like rhetoric in the past of like if you, if you come to someone and you're coming to them directly with your emotions and like share what's happening and you say. Like this is what this is what I'm experiencing. This is what I need in order to feel safe. Because mm -hmm. people think like needy is a bad thing, right? <laughs> but like obviously, there's varying degrees. You can't be like, give me this, give me this, give me right, this, give right, me this. Right. But like, <laughs> I guess but, I guess you're right. <laughs> but like, um, I don't think of like th thinking of it as needy is kind of doing a disservice because if yeah. you're asking for your needs like you're not like being needy you're kind of just asking for what is essential for you to feel safe and connected so people fe fear that that's like <laughs> overwhelming and that like the other person can't handle it or anyone else can't handle it and, like, and this know? and what you're saying is gonna actually kind of um it's gonna seep into these other styles yeah. i think that's the reaction so um, so this is actually good intel as I navigate these, guessing these other styles. You know, I think somebody who's securely attached, uh, it, it, you, you know, you have to work through to getting to that point. I don't think anybody is human naturally that way. And I know that mm. according to my research, you don't, you don't have to have like one particular style. You might be a hybrid of both. So uh, yeah. of some other ones. Definitely. Yeah. And I would say something that like lends a lot into your attachment style is, like is the family that you grew up with and mm. the environment that you were raised in so that also takes part in it like your family but also the other caregivers in your life and maybe even your experience in elementary school and growing up because from the very very moment that you are born like you form an attachment with your mom, your mom okay. right and yeah. so um you already start doing that uh -huh. and so if as a baby you like you start crying right because you're needing something and then the mom comes to you and like cares for you and gives you love and also um attends to your need then that is already starting to form a like in an attachment and a guarantee and a safety where it's like if i share what is happening and what i'm uncomfortable with yeah. and i'm vulnerable i am confident that people are going to listen to that and they're going to help me with it because of the fact that like my mom was yeah. was there or whoever like mm -hmm. other caregivers and family members and the environment was was there for me and mm -hmm. provided me safety and care when I was younger so a lot of that has to do with like the attachment that you form and continue to form as you as you mold into an adult and then you meet some other people who have different styles. Yes. So okay. Let's, so let's uh, get to the other styles. Because yeah. now you're, you're, I want to ask some other questions okay. off of that, but I don't, I want to, okay, I think the other styles will help kind of, I'll ask them at the point. Got it, yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Um, <laughs> so the other, so another style would be, um, okay, so thinking of someone 
that um, comes into a relationship and they maybe feel as though um, they don't like deserve love or they um, again are too much or maybe they don't see themselves in such a positive life with a lot of positive light with a lot of confidence um, and they see others with a lot of confidence and hold them up so then for them having that love and having that connection is so so important and so they will do um, many things within their behaviors to try to keep that love close to close to them um, and they are worried about kind of losing that connection or being disconnected from that love so then they feel completely overwhelmed by that fear of being abandoned and so that's going to come out in their behaviors and how they are connected with the person <laughs> okay uh i know exactly what this one is okay. i mean i hope so uh, it does remind me of oh, when i was very young my okay. first relationship yeah. it reminds me a lot of that okay. and at the time i'm like I, you know you're like you said earlier i feel like at that time i was so in it that i didn't know my way out i honestly mm -hmm. felt like I wouldn't say it's stuck, but I felt like, oh my God, if I don't have this person in my life, like, how will I survive, you know? But yeah. at the same time, the funny was, the funny thing was is that the relationship was completely toxic. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't really even being loved in the way that I, my needs were not being met. Mm -hmm. And But then I felt very needy. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like I was chasing mm -hmm. the love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chasing it, chasing it. Um, and, and, and I was very confused because I was all in. Like, my heart yeah. was like why don't you want to spend time with yeah. me? You know, for me, it was just, I was very confused because I was like, wait, you say you love me, but then, you know, I'm trying to connect with you more and you distance yourself, which I think is, a, is another, uh -huh. uh, now that I'm learning about this, I'm uh -huh. like, I think that person had another attachment style uh -huh. of, um, that it just, we just weren't able to meet, you know? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We were too far away from each other and that's why it didn't, it didn't work out. But, uh -huh. so this reminds me a lot of anxious uh -huh. attachment uh -huh. style, correct? Yes, you got it. <laughs> so... <laughs> From what I'm hearing, you resonate yes. with the anxious, at least you in the past. Yes, me in the past. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. And I can talk to you about, like, I, I mean, you could help me understand, like, how yeah. I made my... I feel like now I'm in a, in a the secure and honestly, well, I feel with my relate with my marriage at least I feel more secure mm -hmm. maybe with friendships and other thing maybe I do feel still a little anxious only because you know we don't you know it's harder to you know when you're when you become an adult you know there's only so much time you can give to other people and so yeah. maybe there's some of that anxiety there but I think with when it comes to Anna and you can help me understand this because I was, that's the question I was going to ask you is like mm -hmm. I actually do very feel like we're both very much secure attachment and mm -hmm. I think you know I was single for a few a few years and I think in that time I really you know was very particular about who i was going to let into my life because mm -hmm. i didn't want to feel that pain again like mm -hmm. i was like the disappointment and you know um by the time i think i met anna i felt like okay um i think her i was i'm happy to say like i was very direct with her about like what my needs were mm -hmm. like i was like these are my five non-negotiables mm -hmm. like very early on i was like mm -hmm. this is what i'm looking for this mm -hmm. is what i want like yeah and uh and uh, the old jackie would have never done that <laughs> like How did never you know what your what those like, vibes were yeah, yeah. oh now we're getting somewhere <laughs> um i think honestly um as in it as in it i was in that relationship that the former that my first relationship i also think was ultimately very aware of like were the were the moments were the, what were my needs because they weren't being met mm. so clearly for me yeah. afterwards i was like wait these things actually are really important to me these are fundamental to I resonate with that yeah, yeah. right i'm yeah. like these are like fun yeah. wait why are these fundamental to me and it does remind me to my childhood mm -hmm. you know my parents aren't perfect but i know that like fundamentally like they did what they could to make sure that that they knew that they knew that that you know they loved me mm -hmm. and that i was they were there for me mm -hmm. um and so I think I was looking for like, wait, isn't this a natural thing? Like, wouldn't this make mm -hmm. sense to, to spend time together to, you know, mm -hmm. X, Y, Z. And I'm like, these are not being met. And so mm -hmm. I, that's why I always tell people my advice, those single girls is mm -hmm. like, you cannot compromise your truth. And for me, my truth, my who I really am and what really matters to me is like these fundamental things, mm -hmm. which is like spending time together, mm -hmm. like being able to have the space to like say what I have to say, you know, mm -hmm. share what how what I feel, yeah. what my needs are, yeah. and not feel like I'm being needy judged or judged. Or that you're not safe to sharing it. Yes. In yeah. Like, yeah. like, 
because with Anna, it's like, oh, I'm going to tell her exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, she's going to hear it. Mm -hmm. And I want her, you know, I, that's, I'm always making sure she feels like she can also do that with me mm -hmm. because I, I'm not going to hold back anymore because it's not, I feel like you can't run from your truth. You can't run from being honest. And if you're in a space, whether it's friends or a relationship where you cannot be honest with them, it's like, then you're just, is this just pretend like and think and sometimes it sucks yeah it's sometimes yeah. you're not going to like to hear what you're yeah, going to hear no. but it's and when i'm okay with that and i don't know why i'm right. okay with that but i'm okay with that no in that instance <laughs> i think i think you kind of have to like you're sitting with like two things like either i have to be okay with compromising my truth like you said and like not having the my needs met and not getting everything that I know I could potentially get in a relationship versus like, wait, if I just share, if I'm just true to myself, if I'm just genuine and authentic, but I also feel secure that like the other person will be there for me and love me when I'm being my true authentic self, then like, which one's the better one to reach out to? You tell me, everyone. It's, okay, it's a lot easier said than done, obviously. <laughs> but um, and yeah, like kind of what you were explaining kind of um, pinpointed those two things out for me and mm. kind of um, helped me see a little bit maybe where you were in that position of where you had like those two options and you chose like, no, I'm going to be mm. who I want. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share what is important to me and what is going to make me feel close to someone mm -hmm. and connected. And then I'm going to use that to find the person that can provide that for me. Which I have my tattoo here. Uh -huh. It means, I don't know if people can't see it, but it's double happiness. Uh -huh. and China, you do, are you familiar with this, the Chinese culture? No, so in Chinese no. culture, um, when people get married, they have this symbol, which is essentially two happy people coming together. Aww. And so, and I think that's, I guess I'm, I know it's not, it's not as simple as, you know, it's just this and this, yeah. but, but I do believe uh, for me, going through that experience taught me, uh, as painful as it was, it, it taught me so much about, what it, it taught me a lot about myself, about what I needed mm -hmm. and what I wanted from my partner and what that looked like. Um, had I not had that experience, I always tell Anna, I was like, you, you know, you, I'm like, you don't want to meet 22 year old Jackie. Like, <laughs> because honestly, I'm not, it's also me, you know, I right. also was, you know, immature and I, you know, ne never been in a relationship. So I also was like, you know, maybe I was too, like not too needy, but I meant like, maybe I also wasn't as, um, uh, you know, I, I'm sure I had my faults in not being as maybe as understanding or trying to understand the other person. Um, How would you know at 22? Like, yeah, you, you just you don't, you know. don't know. I'm just like yeah. I just want to be yeah. in love, and and so yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah. now you just don't know. But if I hadn't had that experience, I wouldn't have been able to identify like, oh, these are things that this is the path I I I want. Very true. I mean, you don't know what you're missing and what you need until you're you go through that experience mm -hmm. and you reflect and you're like, oh, I could have used this. I could have used this. I yeah. know I need this. Yeah. I know I need that. So for you, like that experience allowed you time to reflect on what your non-negotiables were mm -hmm. and like what you need to feel safe <laughs> in a relationship to then yeah. find Anna who can provide that for you yeah. and, hope, and, and be in a space where both of you feel secure yeah. and like, where both of you feel like you can share what is important to you and that it's not going to drive each other away. Yeah. yeah. Now let's talk about that anxious person though, sure. that 22 year old. Let's talk about sure. it because there's a lot of people out there who <laughs> maybe they're older and they say, but that's fine. Okay. So in those years that I was with this person, True. I did choose time and time again, not, I chose to go against my mm -hmm. truths and my needs mm -hmm. and time again. So help me understand why, why you think I, you said that sometimes with anxious people, it's like you feel like you need to earn that love. And mm -hmm. I feel like I've, there have been other friends too where I felt like I was chasing them and trying to earn it. Um, mm -hmm. What, yeah, I'm just trying, I'm trying yeah, to think is. of like why you think I like stayed in, like why does one I stay think, in that attachment style? Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with, um, just your experience growing up mm -hmm. and your experience with love and care and affection when you were younger. Mm -hmm. um, like, were you in any instances where you felt like, like 
you had to work to earn somebody's love. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. So then, <laughs> so then that would kind of follow you, right? So then, mm. if when you were younger, you were growing up and you were in situations where love was maybe a little bit more guarded from those people around you, and you had to kind of knock down the barriers a little bit to try and get that access to love for yourself then you start to learn that well love isn't so easy to achieve and to get access to so that means like it's always something that I need to earn it's always something that I need to prove and I need to do all of these things all of these like forms of connection and like these <laughs> uh behaviors of like no um like these like ways of reaching out to show like no I'm showing you I can be the love for you I can earn it I can earn it I can earn it so Oof, that feels so <laughs> I I feel that so closely because I feel like that part of me that spirit of me and that mm -hmm. what that experience I had it's then tr I feel it uh, as you're saying those things I feel like it sort of just sprinkled over every part of my life mm -hmm. so not just not relationships but like the way I worked and how much I wanted to prove myself and mm -hmm. how much and then in all do, in doing all that I feel like I really just lost myself I really lost the love for myself or that like that stuff that you have when you're a kid when you're just like yeah I'm the coolest like you might be like nine or ten the and you look ridiculous the, but you're like yeah, yeah you're just like the, and then all this stuff happens and so I think it, it hits me because I'm like oh my gosh like People don't realize like these attachment styles like don't just apply to relationships and friendships and relationships, but they apply to the way in which you interact in the world, mm -hmm. in the choices mm -hmm. you make for yourself, mm -hmm. in the attachments you have towards other things mm -hmm. like that are, you know, yeah, not yeah. the great things. So it's just like, it's just like to me, it's just so it's a topic that just like can really just um, it, it just just really kind of provides context in so many different things and it hits in many yes. different ways yes and that's why for me it was so like enlightening to see because it was this kind of like map finally <laughs> to it's kind a of map like, oh, yes like, yeah and so um something i wanted to add as well i think is um yeah, with, with the anxious, I think mm -hmm. going into more of the why, I think also sometimes like people feel like they need to earn that love maybe because they feel like they also don't like deserve love in some ways as well. And so um, I think that is also another reason like to that why. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I can tell you like, and I, and I share, I'm trying to bring some context with my experience because I feel like. I mean, I mean, that's, how can I not? That's why I do these, honestly, <laughs> is I want to bring people along in the journey and hopefully see themselves or start to question what they're going through. Mm -hmm. But when I hear that, I'm like, I can't not think about like when I, it's funny because people always ask me like, how did you know, when did you know you were gay, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like, and that's, I mean, that's a whole other thing about education and children. It's like when you're kids, it's like, you, there's no education around that. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody telling you it's okay, you know? But I'm pretty sure I knew when I was eight. Mm -hmm. And that's when I actually started to like gain weight and I started to like have a protect myself with food like mm -hmm. it was a it was something that I was protecting myself of and I'm being like oh my god am I even deserving of any love now mm -hmm. that I know that I'm different I can tell that I'm different I know that there's like something you know mm -hmm. and it, so it reminds me of like this idea of like I have to earn love I have mm -hmm. to earn respect from people mm -hmm. because man when they find out I'm gay like when this because I think you know I knew eventually like what is the, it was something it was all going to come out and so I think I maybe subconsciously was just preparing and just making sure that I proved to people like they knew that like even when they find out this about me like yeah. they won't just see Jackie the gay girl and I mean I think I, th I think about it now I'm like it's just it's ridiculous but yeah. but I, these were true core thoughts of mine mm -hmm. growing up mm -hmm. those core thoughts that yeah. build you that form you right um and so going into this relationship it was the first relationship I had with a woman. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there was even another layer of like, okay, well now it's like, I really got to prove that mm -hmm. I can have the love that I actually have mm -hmm. been hiding from or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so I think, um, yeah, it reminds me of yeah. that, of those thoughts no, you have, even you as a kid. Yeah. yeah. I wonder, as you think, as you were talking about that, a thought came across or a question was like, I wonder if, um, 
I wonder if you, there was a need to feel like that you needed to prove the, the love was so strong because maybe there was a fear that like, okay, if I'm going to be um, living myself authentically mm -hmm. and um, going to be in, um, finding someone that I love and I know I'm going to love and um, I'm going to pursue life as as a gay woman, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I, the fear, uh, the fear of that being, diff not like different because people view it in that way, right? Yeah. But the fear of it being outside of the norm, like there's a fear that I need to prove it so much so mm. that others like can be in the same space of understanding as me. Does that make sense? It does make sense, but my mind actually went the opposite side okay the side of like not necessarily the what people will think and what i have to prove to me though but the opposite internally. the opposite side of no not even internally of 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 this person like of this if, if i get rejected by this person mm -hmm. then it's like i really don't it hurts even more it hurts even like i don't even it's then i really am not deserving of love like i don't know if that makes sense because my mind didn't go from like i guess my mind didn't think about like having to prove that I'm gay it was more of like now there's this person who who sees me truly in the most honest way than anybody mm -hmm. at that point mm -hmm. if this person rejects that side of mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. that I've been trying to reject mm -hmm. then if I can't prove to her that I'm worthy mm -hmm. then maybe I'm not worthy at all mm -hmm. does that make sense no it, it does and there's I that think, intensity yeah I, I it feels more intense it feels uh even like heavier in fear because this is the ultimate love. I yeah. know that this is the ultimate love that yes. I need and that I want. Yes. So if that's rejected, then yes. that's like, oh, I cannot come back. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it, hurt, it hurts deeper. And, um, yeah. and, uh, and, and, and that's, a, that's, a high, that's a heavy order, right? And I think that's why it, my attachment was so anxious because it was not based on uh, the, you know, I'm not going to say normal, but it wasn't based on like your typical relationship, right? Where it's like, there was just so much more like loaded onto this plate of the relationship that I think it caused me to be anxiety, to having to just like prove or want or, you know, it just, it was, it was heavy. And mm -hmm. um, so naturally, um, her, their attachment style was well. I'm gonna tell you what it is, yes. and you describe what it is. Yeah. Okay. Let's so do her, it. so her, she was very um, avoidant. Okay. Yeah. So she was like, "Oh, you're getting close. I'm gonna just like, we don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, pushing me away and mm -hmm. this and that. And so, you know, when she was just pushing me away, she was avoidant. Uh, but she would make sure that she would make certain statements or actions to at least keep me at uh, arm's length mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was love there, but it was like on her terms right, and right. I you know if I were to open up it was like too needy mm. it was like too like too much mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so what does this sound like to you yeah somebody so, who's like that <laughs> yeah so someone who is avoidant um from what I understand is someone that is really self-assured in themselves and in who they are um and um have a lot of trust in themselves but don't have a lot of trust in other people um so therefore there's like a sort of fear that um others will not be there for me as much as i will for myself like i know how to take care of myself <laughs> more than others have shown or demonstrated that they can take care of me and so because of that, um, there is a um, kind of survival skill or just something that has been ingrained in who they are since they were younger to keep people at arm's length, um, even though they also like desperately want love and connection. That's yeah. not that's not out of the table, out of like off the table at yeah. all, because yeah. they also want that. But um, there's like this sort of distrust in people. So mm. then they keep them a little bit at arm's length because they feel as though um, they can only trust themselves and how they're able to like meet their own needs. So then if someone is coming to them like anxious, right? <laughs> what if happens? If someone's coming to them anxious, 
with like, um, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm needing this connection, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling this way, then all of a sudden it's like so overwhelming for that. I'm so sorry, avoided. that's my phone. <laughs> Bad Jackie. Okay, sorry. Uh. We are talking about when anxious and avoidant collide. Yeah, when they collide. Yeah, okay, so what happens when anxious and avoidant collide? What happens? Yeah, so you have someone that is anxious and they are, um, they very much feed into each other. So uh, perhaps you're in a situation between an anxious and avoidant where the anxious person is feeling, a l maybe they're feeling far away from their partner and mm -hmm. they're feeling disconnected and there are some things that are, um, maybe they're not feeling like the love or they're not feeling the affection. And so they're gonna come to the avoidant person and say, hey, I'm missing this. Can I have a little bit more of this? Uh -huh. Can I have this? Can I have a little bit more of this? This is something really important to me. Um, and then that avoidant person um, will start to feel overwhelmed by that anxious person <laughs> coming to them okay. with like, um, I'm needing this, can I please have this? This is something that is important to me. So then as a consequence, um, the avoidant person will feel overwhelmed and feel like they cannot perhaps give that anxious person what they're needing. Mm -hmm. So then they'll kind of, kind of create more of that distance mm. because they feel like that's what they need in order to kind of keep things at bay or keep things at peace. Or that's just like their instant like reaction, right? So- um, What is that space, may I ask you, like that yeah. space that people create? Cause I'm sure there's a lot of people that resonate with this, sure. the sure. encounter avoidant okay. is like this space that they create for themselves. Like, do you feel um, that creating that space is healthy is it wise like is there a is there a world where that actually that space does help them to come back like mm. what's the yeah that's a good question i don't think um i don't think the space itself is like is a negative thing if a person needs space they need space right if they're feeling overwhelmed then that's okay that's valid that's that's their experience but if someone is feeling activated by something that the other person is doing and they feel like they need a little bit of time to just pause and debrief mm -hmm. and process what the other person is asking for, then what's helpful, especially for that anxious person, is to say to that person who is living within that, that anxious moment to say, hey, I hear you, um, I understand this is important for you, um, and I wanna talk about it. Um, I just need a little bit of time to think about this, um, to think about how I can best help mm. you. I'll come back in like an hour and, and, and we can talk about it, right? Mm. And then we'll come back and get, mm. and get through it together. So it's like basically asking so like the anxious person is is asking for for their needs, mm -hmm, right? And mm -hmm. so basically, what would be helpful is for that avoidant person to also ask for the space in a way that they need as well, instead of perhaps um, like cutting off communication, <laughs> right? Or uh -huh. um, kind of uh, just basically going in and going out, going in and going out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of some other ways. Is gaslighting a way of avoiding? Gaslighting. Saying? Gaslighting someone's feelings, like putting diminishing. Yeah, maybe invalidating. invalidating. Yeah, I would say in, invalidating, mm -hmm. um, minimizing the situation, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that that could also be a way of of pushing the other person away. Yeah. Right. So, um, I don't think. I think it's important to note that, like, if a person. Everyone processes things at different speeds and at different, like, in different ways. Did you right? hear that, everybody? <laughs> so if someone, if someone cannot provide an answer to what you are asking for in terms of your need right away, that's yeah. okay. If they need a little bit of time to process through it, that's completely okay. But I think what's helpful, especially if someone that is like anxious and trying to trying to connect, is communicating. I just need a little bit of time to process mm -hmm. this, but I will come back to you. I will mm -hmm. come back. I know what you're asking for is important and I want to talk about it with you. I just need a little bit of time. Do you see the power <laughs> in that? Like in the power of someone 
like avoiding you or pushing away versus someone who may have to need that time but is communicating that like right that is a world of difference why is that communication so powerful like well, if you were to break it down like let me <laughs> turn it to you so like oh, <laughs> i love questions so like if um if so kind of channeling back your like anxious self a little bit okay. <laughs> so <laughs> if the person you were with were, were to if you noticed they were pulling away and you were trying to reach for that connection and they were pulling away if mm -hmm. if they came to you and kind of said that like i'm hearing you that you're telling me you need this i want to talk about it it's important i just need to i need like an hour or two mm -hmm. just to finish what i'm doing and then or to process this and then we'll come back to it i promise i will come back to you how do you think that would have helped you in that moment you know what comes to mind is it makes me feel like they heard me yeah immediately i was like okay yeah. they they they're 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 working to connect with me and validate my feelings they hear me um they're not me so that's also fine too because mm -hmm. they need time to process it mm -hmm. but at least there is a sense of like i'm not just like talking into the i'm just, just like talking to the talking out to the world with nobody yeah with answering. nobody yeah. you know where you're like trying to reach to your partner yeah. and be like hey like hey, hello. Uh, hello hello you're and supposed also, to be there and also <laughs> feeling like uh, you know i i think in channeling that person right now i was like oh, I, I ended up being frustrated with myself because i'm like i hate that i have to be this like annoying person like you end up hating yourself right. too in the process right you know? and then that speaks to the the big fear that comes with like asking for your needs as an anxious person you feel like <laughs> oh my gosh am i being too yeah. needy am yeah. i asking for too much yeah. am i like overwhelming this person so then you start to like self-doubt right with your head yeah yeah so then you said you would feel <laughs> validated and feel heard right and yes. then I would, yes, if had I heard that, yes. Yeah, and, and do you feel like you would have, like, given the person the space? You you would have felt secure and safe enough to have been like, okay. I don't know, I don't know. I'm we not going to lie to you. We don't but know. I, we don't know, but I... I probably would have questioned, like, well, what space I, do you Yeah, need? I would have yeah. had to question it, but I think... Um, so I, I think there is a that that also speaks to like both people have to have some, that sort of level of maturity. Empathy, too. Empathy, empathy, yeah. that's a good one. Uh, but I do think, because I was thinking about that too, I was like, what I, as you were saying it, I was like, would I give this person, like, I do feel her, like, would I give this person that time? I think, I think uh, knowing that there was, and if that was like a, something that was consistent, where it was like, we would talk, I think it would yes. build that. Yes. Um, so maybe like. you would know that they would yeah, come back. So maybe like yeah. earlier version of yeah. me in that space, yeah. yeah. But like one of the first times that um, I, Anna and I had like a disagreement, I guess, right? I was like, okay, I can either just like be dismissive and just be like, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. or I can talk about it. I'm like, okay, let's see, let's see how she, re you know, how let's see how she responds to my very, mm -hmm. or you know, honest feelings about mm -hmm. how that something made me feel. Mm -hmm. So I told her because mm -hmm. she could tell something was up. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. gonna communicate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget what she said. She goes, and I was like, oh, she goes, uh, Jackie, mm -hmm. what's important to you is important to me. So if that's Aww. important to you. And I had never that's heard that so before. Nobody had ever said that to genuine me. Genuine and safe. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> how, did, how did you feel? <laughs> oh my God, well, I was in disbelief. I was like, wait, what's happening right now? Because <laughs> I was ready for her to like, I was ready to fight, you know? I was like, let's go. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I was like, I was like, really? I, I don't know if I said really, but I was mm -hmm. just kind of like, wait, do you remember Anna? Do you remember what I said to you when you said that? Because I know you're hearing me. <laughs> No, I think you're just like, okay, well then, this, this, or that. Yeah. She was in shock. I was like, okay, right, well then, uh, okay, this is what I'm going to say. Yeah, so. <laughs> let me share that. But you know what? I think Anna, um, her her energy and her the way she was with me, I could tell she was secure. Mm. And I was very attracted to how mm -hmm. secure she was with herself, with her, mm -hmm. with her relationships. Mm -hmm. And... And looking back, I always, I've been saying a lot of times, like, I was like, oh, she's just a good per She is a good person. She's a good person. She means well. She's genuine. But now that I've learned about these attachment styles, I was like, oh, man, I think I was also drawn to 
how secure she was. Like, uh, I didn't, I never felt like she was like avoidant or anxious. Mm -hmm. She actually, even one of the first times we, the first day we like kissed or whatever, when it mm -hmm. became more than a friendship mm -hmm. before that, she was like, she straight up was like, what are your intentions with me? Like she was direct, you know, but that, I think that's secure attachment where she's like, yeah. you know what? Like, I want to know what's going on. And so for me, I thought that was very attractive. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. Now I'm sense, now yeah. you're showing me all these, this yeah. is before that other conversation because we were already yeah. in a relationship. But I was like, she's, she showed me how, um, you know, confident she was and, and just direct. I don't know. I just I don't know no, what comes to mind. The with thing this. about the secure person, they're not going <laughs> to continue with something that's not going to meet their needs. Oh. You know? Okay. So if they, if they're, <laughs> if they're kind of going into a relationship or seeing this is a relationship that they want to pursue, they know what their needs are and what's mm -hmm. important to them and can communicate with it. And if they're noticing that there isn't going to be an opportunity for those things to be um, validated mm -hmm. and for those things to be heard, then they're going to be like, okay, this is not helpful for me. Peace out. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Because they know that they deserve and can receive love and then they also know they can give it as well yeah. you know and that's i think that always goes back, like they know who they are like mm -hmm. i mean I'm, I'm not saying like you know exactly who you are but you know enough to know like what fundamentally mm -hmm. is like what is mm -hmm. what what is um, important to you in terms of just those fundamental blocks of relationship building friendships and all that stuff like yeah. i think if you Oh man, I, th I really do think like once you start compromising those things, it's just because like, it's a domino effect. It's like, okay, well maybe I'm okay with this, and then then you're like, okay, with well, this, and then you're like, why am I not happy? It's like, yeah, because you are living on their terms, yeah. and it's yeah. and that's why I go back to this like two people coming together. It's like, you know, you have to be happy. I know what they say, you have to be happy with yourself so you can be happy, but it's also it's like you have to live your path, and you have to walk alongside someone. That's mm -hmm. what it's about. Mm -hmm. So walking alongside someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm in your truth because um not why walking, would you want to yeah not walking behind someone not mm. walking in front of them <laughs> not carrying them yeah, i mean sometimes not, maybe maybe a little bit yeah. but you know what holding I mean. hands yeah holding hands <laughs> yeah. you know sometimes you limp and yeah. that's okay you know because yeah. that yeah. life happens but yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i like that mm -hmm. yeah i um i don't know if, i remember where i heard this from but i remember hearing that um when describing a relationship um a lot of people think that two people, if you kind of look at it as an image of a bathtub, like two people should be in the same bath bathtub, like holding hands. Like that's what oh, a, okay. a relationship should be. When in reality, it should actually be each person in their own bathtub mm. and then holding hands, mm -hmm. like connected in between the two. Because then like you have one person that is their own individual self, kind yeah. of um, living their own life and their own um way of who they are and asking mm -hmm. for their own needs and mm -hmm. having their own identity mm -hmm. and you have the other person doing the same thing but they're connected with it you know if you're in the same bathtub then you're kind of just like mixing everything up and you there's lose not enough room of, either you lose your sense of identity yeah <laughs> there's exactly. not enough there's room for two people too. in the bathtub there's not <laughs> but, but, you, but you mentioned something really i got this like visual when you were uh -huh. saying that it's like a lot of people think i mean listen if you're in a relationship, it's you're choosing to be in a relationship. Yeah. And what I mean by what I mean by that is mm -hmm. that like if you're single and you do not want to hear other people to tell you what to do or want to do stuff with other people and mm -hmm. hear another person's thoughts and work through like work alongside with them, you don't have to be in. Nobody no. needs to be in a relationship. But if you choose to be in one, you you just mentioned something about like you have your needs in your bathtub, right? Yeah. And then the other person has their needs. And it's about understanding each other's needs and creating a bathroom <laughs> where you have the supplies for everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and working alongside each other to help each other get the supplies you want, yeah. get the water to be good. Yeah. Your water is good. My, I mean, I yeah. always tell you, and I was like, I mean, we're a team. Like, we're, we are a team. Like, we're, we're, you and I win. Like, we both win. Like, you know, so I think... Um, part of in creating that that environment is to be able to have a space to securely talk about things that sometimes are hard sometimes are sad but having a space to be honest and mm -hmm. be free to know that that person's going to receive mm -hmm. that information and not think like oh man jackie's trying to hurt me no it's like jackie's mm -hmm. trying to it's like i really think it's come and even relationship friendships it's like it's all about how can i under how, how can i help this person 
understand me better. Exactly. How can we help each other understand each exactly. other better to strengthen exactly. how we how, how we walk alongside each other? Exactly. And that's why I really like <laughs> learning about attachment, right? Absolutely. Because then you understand yourself better and you understand the other person better. And then it helps you. It gives you more tools to then mm -hmm. understand like, okay, this person's behavior is this way. Hmm. I'm wondering if it has to do with like maybe this need that's not being met mm -hmm. okay so maybe like they're being activated or like triggered in like yeah. this way so then it kind of like it kind of humanizes yes. the behaviors a little oh. bit more that yes. you can see right like instead of just kind of um feeling so scared and confused when someone's ghosting you which is not a good thing obviously but if you understand that that person has like an avoidant attachment style mm -hmm. and you're noticing that behavior then it's like okay i'm noticing this person is like pulling away mm -hmm. um i understand that like it's a little bit harder for them to maybe be um, emotionally vulnerable maybe they're pulling away because we got a little bit too emotionally vulnerable and maybe they're pulling away because they need some space how can I help them ask for that space that they need <laughs> by knowing their yeah. attachment yeah, style. Yeah, yeah, does that yeah. make sense yeah those are literally yeah. like the tools yeah. to um, get closer to your friend your 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 partner uh, get closer to them mm -hmm. because there's these styles that get in the way and because I immediately think like sometimes you know without using these tools it's a, it's very easy for us as humans to be like oh well they're they suck yeah like they don't get it they yeah. suck this and that and like it's so easy for us to just be dismissive but it's like I think if you really um care about someone um just like you care about yourself and want to mm -hmm. understand who you are you have mm -hmm. to like understand well why are they the way they are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how do I kind of get closer to them and um and talk about it and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, for you, I was gonna ask you a question. Yeah. Like, sometimes it's normal and human to get frustrated, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Totally. Okay. Yeah. Because I feel like some people are be like, well, it's just frustrating, guys. Like, it's. Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna be like, okay, so let's it talk. It doesn't feel good to be in an anxious <laughs> state or. To feel like you're being ignored? No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So okay. So how do you? How does? How does one start to start making the step? Not with the relationship, but with yourself. Like, say you're you you it has nothing to do with even your relationships with other people, but you're mm -hmm. like the way you perceive yourself. You're like, I don't like this anxiety. Like, I don't like to be insecure about my relationships, my friendships. Mm -hmm. I don't like to be um, push people away. Mm -hmm. So how do you kind of start making your way towards a secure path for yourself? Mm. Um, <laughs> I know that's a loaded question. Or what are some small th or steps that I think people can... I think definitely therapy helps. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. We are advocates uh, of therapy. Yes. I think that definitely helps um, to have <laughs> a grounded perspective um, and mm -hmm. a third-party perspective. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because a lot of what you're... A lot of what will... Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> you okay? The coffee went the wrong way. <laughs> Ooh, that just was getting real into it. I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Come on, I'm all. I better get it. Go on, go on. Okay. Woo. Okay. All right. I'm ready you for your advice. Yeah, okay. go for it. <laughs> um, from a lot of what comes undone in like a therapeutic relationship is a like reciprocal image of like what can happen in like other relationships. So like how you interact and connect with your therapist mm -hmm. could, is like an indicator of how you do it with other people. So like the therapist as like a, hopefully as like a neutral, like grounded third party observer, um, that person can hopefully highlight some of the patterns like they're seeing within you mm -hmm. and some of the ways that some of the things that maybe are inhibiting you from wanting to be that secure person or achieve that kind of more secure lifestyle so then that's why i think that's why like therapy came to me as as the first <laughs> answer mm -hmm. because um that can allow you to be in a space to be open to receive feedback 
and then also to get some tools that can mm -hmm. assist you. So yeah. I would say that. Okay. And then also um, just kind of taking a moment to, taking time to reflect and be a little bit more self-aware and self-reflective yeah. and be a little bit more introspective. So kind of like how you were describing when you were single between <laughs> that time of yeah. the a relationship with the avoidant person to yeah. then like your secure relationship it sounds like you took that time to really <laughs> sit with yourself yeah. and reflect and think about yeah. what are the things that are important for me what are my non-negotiables mm. what who am I what do I deserve mm. what kind of love do mm. I want and what do I want it to look like and so that would you say that period of self-reflection allowed you to start to grow into a more secure space absolutely i think the question to you now back to you is like i was so heartbroken that i'm like i don't even know how i got the i mean to be honest like as sad as it sounds like i really i think it took me being like i uh am so devastated mm -hmm. and so disappointed with love that i'm like okay i need to like I mean, I don't think I was consciously like, I need to rebuild who I am, my identity. It's never really it's like never that. Really like yeah. that. But I think subconsciously <laughs> yeah. I was like, how do I, how do, this is going to sound mm -hmm. weird, but I, I think looking back, I think I was like literally just like survival. It's like, mm -hmm. how do I get through each day without this person? Yeah. And the only person I can turn to was me. me. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, well then I need to slowly do that. And, and part of that was you know, re reintroducing myself to the things that I had already built, like friendships and career and, and yeah. what are new things I wanted. And, um, and I dated, but it was just like, nah, like I was like, no, like, I mean, I don't think I let myself get too attached. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like you were, um, you were showing yourself or giving yourself the love and care that you felt like you were missing or needed whoa <laughs> right so you're, uh, yeah like, you're yeah in that space and you're like this person's not going to take care of me <laughs> yeah i need to take care of yeah. me i'm going to reconnect to the things and the people that fill my cup that make me feel fulfilled and yeah. joy and also make me feel like worthy and that i love myself yes so then within that do you think the tide started to turn and like i am worthy of love i am yeah deserving of love and i mm -hmm. can love myself so therefore mm -hmm. another person can love me too mm -hmm. as long as i know mm -hmm. what i need mm -hmm. yeah it's funny enough i there was um you know uh a few months before i met anna when i was still in la i, mm -hmm. was, I dated a guy for mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. uh ironically him a guy of all, re of all people but mm -hmm. <laughs> In dating him, I noticed I, a, a, there was a version of myself mm -hmm. that I was like, oh my God, I, I like this version of me. Mm -hmm. Like, I like who I am around. Like, mm -hmm. I like who I am with this person. Like, mm -hmm. I like this person that's coming out and being vulnerable with this person. Mm -hmm. Like, I like this person and this feels nice. And I feel, I feel, um, I've never really thought that, that and think about it. So let me think mm -hmm. here. Like. Yeah, like I like who I am. I think that I am pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. I think it's like, and I think he sees that too. You know, because mm -hmm. we're having a good time, and I think emotionally I was opening up in a way mm -hmm. that I hadn't in a while, in a long time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that, and you know, he did ghost me, which it's fine. He came out years after because <laughs> as they do, they come back and they're like, "Sorry, it was a hard time in my life." I'm like, "That's fine." <laughs> yeah. Because you know what I did instead of like, and I don't know, it's crazy. It's like instead of being upset that he ghosted me, I, mm. I, I leaned on like, "Oh my God, who is this person that just like is awake now and is here?" Mm. And like, who is this person? I was like, "Oh my God, like I like this. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. that experience." And so. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily, I mean, the guy helped, but it wasn't about the guy the not guy, wanting. Yeah. It was like, it wasn't about the guy, like the guy didn't, I mean, yeah, sure. It was like sad, you know, but I was mm -hmm. like, but I, instead of being like, oh, like, why doesn't he? I was just like, oh my God, I can feel these things again. I was like leaning yeah. on that. And yeah. I, and then like yeah. that, that's when I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to, to really like, to, to really, really date, you know, or like this cement person. this. Yeah. 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 So I just want to share. Yeah. I don't know what you think no, about that, but I think that's beautiful. <laughs> I think I think that. Thank you for sharing. I think that. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really cool. <laughs> I mean, you you got to a point where 
like you said, you just really admired the person that you were and the person that you knew you wanted to continue being. Mm-hmm. So you felt safe with that version of yourself mm-hmm. and you knew, okay, no matter what, I know I want to continue being this version of me and I want to continue growing mm-hmm. and I want to find an opportunity to continue being that person and let's see who can let's see who like who, who can, can cultivate that <laughs> space for Ooh. me yeah. yeah oh wow and it did like i mean honestly like my relationship with anna i've never i've never had it like one like that um mm. where i just i never um i never thought oh if we break i was just like what's hap- what's happening next okay what's happening next yeah. you know and i was also growing as a person and i was like yeah, I think I think also like just a- as we get older, right? We underst- we hopefully understand ourselves a little bit more mm-hmm. and what's important to us, what uh, validates us, what makes us feel safe, what makes us feel connected, mm. and so um, maybe within that relationship, um, that was kind of the practice you needed to mm-hmm. advocate for yourself and to advocate for your needs to then feel confident and secure enough to then realize and understand like I can do this it's it's safe if I am this way it's safe if I am like this vulnerable and I want to continue it <laughs> and the thing about um growing is that like I am still growing as a person, as a human, you know, yeah. because they're, you know, um, I mean, I think that's something that, um, I am excited to see who I will end, you know, and become, but I'm happy mm-hmm. with who I am now. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, when I was researching those attachment, um, styles, um, we didn't talk about the last one. Yeah. yeah let's do the last one. But the last one is like, Oh, why don't like, you tell me about that one? Should I? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Should I? Tell, oh, should I just say the name of it? Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Point, yeah, it's the last one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I think we've been keeping them we've been waiting for yeah, the last one for a while. Yeah, last one. As you can imagine, it's like the, op- the, op- it's like the op- complete opposite of secure. <laughs> right? It's disorganized. Yeah. And yes. I, 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 think or, I think I want to normalize that, like... Um, the, the spectrum it's of it? Not, well, it's not, like, bad to be avoided. It's not bad to be anxious. It's not bad mm. to be disorganized, which oh. is the last one. Um, that is how everybody's living and that's how they've mm. like known to live their life oh. right so i i i don't want to make it sound like secure like you need to be secure to live like the best life right but secure attachment and living as secure attachment does provide you with a lot of like positive benefits when it comes to your mental and emotional health Mm -hmm. also your physical health too because if again if you're secure you feel safe right you feel valued you're able to ask for what you need all of those things can bring positive effects right yeah so i think everyone is trying to work towards or the goal is to try to work towards being secure but i just want to normalize that Mm -hmm. it's not like it's not terrible like, it's not bad if you are right. the, if you are the other right ones. right yeah right. that makes a lot of sense too because you know like i said i'm i can be anxious about like friendships and stuff and i'm like but it gives me by even just like understanding what that is or putting a name on it and understanding what that means it's going to give me the tools to figure out okay how do i mm-hmm. the context of like okay what how can i approach this you know like i have friends where i'm like they're maybe avoidant because but i understand their life experience right mm-hmm. and so i I know that there's limitations. And when I say limitations, I don't mean weaknesses. I mean, like, this is how, this is the way they want, th- these are their boundaries. Mm-hmm. And so, but you really care about somebody, you will, you know, you will work. Yeah. It's a kind of a little, little dance, you know, and yeah. you work through that. So that actually, in hearing that, it helped me realize, like, okay, like, I, I've been able to do all right, you know, and mm-hmm. understanding mm-hmm. that. So I, I totally get what you mean. Like, okay. it, it's not, um, I thank you for sharing that. that it's not like this good or bad thing it's just more of like you said it it provides people context and a map and tools to understand who they are and how to get closer to each other knowing that there are these like fundamental differences life experiences that shape you and all that all that stuff so yeah because each and every person with their style ultimately wants that love and connection that's Mm. that's uh that's the human experience like we all need to be we all want and need to be loved so i don't think that is um 
void in any of the like yeah. anxious or yeah. in the uh, avoidant or disorganized. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Notes, everybody? Okay, cool. Okay, um, disorganized. But disorganized yes, ahead. so disorganized is someone who is, um, uh, it's usually somebody who has experienced a little bit more, I don't know if what the right terminology mm -hmm. would be, but like something a little bit more like traumatic or heavier in terms of like abuse and stuff. So they, yeah. so it's, uh, so they're truly unable to, uh, I don't know if it's like my perception of what, what that attachment style is, but my perception is almost like, they're kind of like very protective of themselves yeah. so they're just very um protective and i guess careful and mindful about who they do want to let into their lives mm -hmm. and so in doing that yeah they may have like some walls up or they're mm -hmm. just like very tactical on who and how they want to mm -hmm. connect with people mm -hmm. um and so i and it's funny they use the word disorganized so to me it's like it's almost like it's almost like there's no it's not even that there's, I feel like the irony is like there is some strategy behind it, but I guess it's not really mm. structured in how they, mm. you know, connect. I don't know. I think the disorganized piece comes from, so you mentioned um, like putting up walls, which is uh, common with an avoidant person. Mm. So with a disorganized, it's kind of a combination of an anxious attachment and oh. an avoidant attachment. Okay. So it's kind of the, the, the melding of the two okay so you have someone that um doesn't feel confident in themselves doesn't like trust themselves to be loved and to receive love and then you also have a distrust for other people as well so you have like both like not the trust in yourself to deserve love and then also not the trust in others to uh, be able to give you love, right? Mm. So then you have people uh, with disorganized in that in that instance you have people that really um, Really want love and they're reaching for it mm. and they can feel anxious and ask for love But then once maybe someone gives them that love they're like, oh no, like what is just this? kidding? No, just <laughs> kidding. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the wall up. Oh. So it's a mixture of both um, so you mentioned like um, that that with this one it's common maybe in childhood there was some trauma um and like neglect and then abu like severe abuse as well mm -hmm. so that one is the more uncommon of the styles mm -hmm. um you'd be surprised there's actually like more secure people in the world than you would think there's like a good percentage of secure a good percentage of anxious, a good percentage of, of, of avoidant, and then mm -hmm. disorganized is mm -hmm. kind of more the smaller percentage. Mm -hmm. So disorganized is the um, combination of the anxious, the person that um, is like feeling like they really need to reach and ask for love and they feel maybe like they don't deserve it or they need to earn it. But then once the person turns around and tries to give it to them, it's like overwhelming, like, oh mm. no, I can't, I can't take it, I can't handle it, I'm worried about them not being able to, mm. to, to to take care of mm -hmm. me does that mm -hmm. make sense yeah and i guess my next question then yeah. would be like because there is someone i think i know who potentially could be that and so my question is how do you how does one connect with them how what can how can one like try to do what they can to be there for them i mean i think it's a little bit more difficult, but I think like with all the other ones, with all the other styles, mm -hmm. just um, having patience and having um, the empathy to understand like what their experience has been like mm -hmm. and maybe why they feel like they don't deserve love and why they feel like they need to have a protective wall to make sure that others cannot hurt them mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. if they've experienced a life where there's neglect and other people have hurt them mm -hmm. then I think what's helpful is to have empathy for that mm -hmm. and to understand like why it would be hard for them to let others in but also have keep in mind and have empathy that this person like even though they have experienced this they do want love mm -hmm. they just haven't experienced it so so much mm -hmm. right in a way that is safe and in a way that is validating for them so it's going to be harder 
for them to kind of ask for that or to be open for it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So I, I don't I don't have like a step by step answer for that one. I think um, I have my notebook right here, <laughs> like ready, girl. No, I think I think just definitely having patience and having empathy, yeah, and trying to understand their yeah. experience. And that person also would definitely I think benefit from therapy as well. Yeah, yeah. I think like that human experience. It's like. Uh, what I've learned is that empathy and that level of just like really trying to see people's like how would like really turn it and be like, well, how would you, you know, if you were in their place, you know, how would Even you navigate? Shoes. Yeah, in their mm -hmm. shoes, how would you navigate things? And also like, you know, I think we're all allowed to have our seasons of stuff happening to sure. us, right? And like, we're allowed that we yeah. evolve, you know, we evolve and we grow um, and um, just, I don't know, for me, it helps me to be like, okay, like, where is my heart at? And where is my heart at with this person? And ultimately, it's like, oh, like, I, I always am constantly reminded of like, you know, no matter any kind of like, change, like, semantics of certain changes that you're like, oh, I'm used to this from this person. It's like, you know, everyone's going through stuff. And so you, you also have to kind of dig deep within yourself and be like, no, like, this person really does love me. And they're just going through something. And mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like I'm a I'm a loyal I'm a very loyal person, and mm -hmm. I just feel like I don't know. Like I, I, for me, it's just like hard to just walk away from people. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I like that about myself. Mm -hmm. For me, it makes sense for me. It's mm -hmm. um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but um, <laughs> I just think that like the empathy and like just really trying to understand where people's heart out. Like I guess it's just like you would be surprised like people do really do care about you and mm -hmm. if things change it's like it's really just it has nothing to do with you mm -hmm. a lot of the times mm -hmm. it's people mm -hmm. are going through stuff and it's yeah, just it's like it's yeah. just their own thing mm -hmm. and, and the reason i say this is like for people who are anxious <laughs> mm -hmm. who aren't, aren't sure it's like mm -hmm. i think for me what's helped me to get to be more secure is just understanding that is that like yeah people yeah don't yeah I don't know. no as long as you i think in those moments where you're worried that it's about you, try to do what you can to self-soothe yourself. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit redundant, but to self-soothe um, so that you can take the pause and just kind of think about mm. like, okay, um, I'm feeling this type of way. Um, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling sad, I'm feeling I'm feeling sad right now, I'm feeling anxious, and the thought I have in my head is like, oh no, I did something wrong to push this person away. Mm. And taking a moment to pause and think, okay, um, this person is not talking talking to me much right now. They're like, they're mess maybe they're a little bit more sporadic in communication. Um, was there something, so like, can, are, are there any instances of proof or evidence that I can like think of and I can grasp on that I know can make me feel a little bit more safe in knowing that this person does care about me and this person does mm. love me and this person does want to connect with me. So kind of taking a moment to like talk to yourself and be like, it's okay that you're feeling this way. It's okay that you're feeling anxious. It's okay that you're feeling sad. This is the thought you're having. Are there instances of this person showing you that they care for you and they want to connect with you that can assuage that mm. fear that maybe can prove that you didn't really do anything wrong especially if you know that there's something that they're going through in that moment if you don't know for sure if, if it's if it's something about them or something about you then you can ask mm -hmm. right um you can <coughs> ask like how are you doing how's your day um is something going on, something concerning you. But I think um, what can help you feel more secure or reach that level of security is to be able to soothe yourself and take care of yourself in that moment where you are feeling like high mm -hmm. anxiety and to remind yourself of those times where that person has shown you that they mm -hmm. care for you. Beautiful. <laughs> Write that down. That's a great, simple way to how to address those feelings that come. Uh -huh. But you have to have a level of conscious consciousness to make those conscious decisions. You know, right. if you really want something of quality, like mm -hmm. you can't rush into your like 
taking this, these steps that you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, and the end will be um, just, it will come natural to you, I think, if yeah. you practice that. It takes practice. It takes practice. It takes practice. Yeah. When you're so, like, so living in that moment of reaction of, like, high anxiety, like, it's so easy to get wrapped mm -hmm. up in that and to get in that spiral yeah. and to, like, send the message after another message be like what's going on what's going on what's going on you know it's yeah because, because it's so scary it's so scary like this person might be leaving like things mm -hmm. are different i don't mm -hmm. know what's happening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know but if you kind of take a moment to listen to yourself mm -hmm. acknowledge and then soothe yourself a little bit hopefully you can take care of yourself in a space for a little bit of time to allow that person to come to you, to come back to you, you know? Yeah, oh, I know. No, this is great. I mean, <laughs> as you're talking about it, I'm like, I mean, I'm, not, I'm a work in progress, right? But I do feel like I've, um, I've been very intentional about like my, in the last couple of years with therapy and, and just really making, like really under reflecting, like you said, mm -hmm. reflecting on my behavior, um, you know, really understanding what is the motive behind the actions you take, mm -hmm. you know, is, is mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. doing that work is actually, in the end, it's liberating because mm -hmm. then you just feel a sense of security, mm -hmm. state, you know, state peace within mm -hmm. yourself. So, um, no, I think it's all, it's all great. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I wanted to, I had one other question for you mm -hmm. that I thought would be a good one to close out with. Is, okay. um, when I feel like when I hear the word, when you first said attachment, you know, I think about like, when people think about attachment, I feel like there's such a, a negative connotation to like oh mm. you're attached to that sure, yeah. you know you're attached to this person you're attached to donuts whatever mm -hmm. you know like this mm -hmm. idea of attachment being like I would, dependent yeah dependent yeah. yeah so when you first said it, i was like oh, okay and then i just had no idea that there's like no there's actually attachment styles and there's you know it's mm -hmm. it's all it's all good you know so i guess my question to you is like what what do you what is your perception about that word attachment and and being attached to people and things and like what, what comes to mind for you? Yeah, I think what comes to mind definitely is that phrase like, oh, that person's attached to that at your hip. Right? Um, or you're attached to that phone. Yeah, actually. you're attached to that phone. <laughs> I, I do, yeah, I, I, I do see where like that word would be a little bit like, not alarming, but just like, oh, attached, like that, that's loaded. That's like mm -hmm. a loaded word. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I think for me when I, when I first saw it or read it or mm -hmm. understood it, mm -hmm. I think, um, I think, be I, th I don't know, I think because it's important to, like, for me, attach just means, like, connection. It just means, mm -hmm. like, um, being close and mm -hmm. having that connection and that relationship with someone. So... That's an interesting question. I, I don't think I, I love have. that though. <laughs> I love that that's what it means to you because for, like it gave it gave me comfort in, in learning about these attachment styles where it's like it's so like attachment doesn't have to be this like negative mm, thing. It could word, be yeah. like you said it could be it can be a, a connection and um, you know um, just just the sense of like uh, being close to people and things mm -hmm. like that that's okay you know mm -hmm. I think it, for me it was like oh this is cool like um because I, I, I was like oh yeah I've always thought of attachment as this like you know a bad thing I think mm -hmm. something you shouldn't become too attached to you know mm -hmm. um so I'm I'm happy that you introduced me to these mm -hmm. uh attachment styles mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that we have hopefully enlightened you with your attachment styles yes all right so we do want to leave you all with some resources mm -hmm. And not that we're not a good resource or anything, but <laughs> there's some people who can share some yeah, more yeah. light on it. Um, some some good uh, people that I've learned a lot from. So um, I would say a podcast that I really um, cherish is one called uh, This Changes Everything. Okay. Um, and that's with uh therapy jeff and love therapy jeff <laughs> yeah oh he God. goes viral a lot on on tiktok <laughs> and on instagram as well yeah he's um he's, he's a therapist so obviously therapy jeff so but he has a lot of insight so therapy jeff and sarah rice are the hosts um so i really um cherish that podcast and they have two episodes on attachment style or attachment theory another resource i like is this book called attached 
I'm blanking on the author's name. Okay. Please forgive me. We'll look it up online and we'll make sure that we'll put a link to the book into the podcast yeah, in this yeah. video. Yeah. But it's this white book with kind of red border and, and lettering and it has like a tax like okay. really big on That's the That's gonna on help me with my Google yeah. just search. Okay. <laughs> okay. Red but and white. Um, that one is really great um it even has like quizzes so you can understand like what your attachment mm. is and maybe um you can take a quiz on what you believe your partner's attachment is okay. and then it kind of breaks down um each one and like okay. how you can understand it better i'm so, telling you this is like the new horoscope <laughs> right like that <laughs> this is what you need to figure out this is what matters <laughs> Um, so those are the two that okay. I, um, really lean on. Um, but you showed me a podcast. I did. Yeah. yeah. So I follow Mel Robbins, mm -hmm. who is like a author and motivational speaker, and she uh, has a podcast as well. She brought on another therapist to talk about these four attachment styles. And so I'll make sure to put the link down here. I think the biggest difference between both of those, those episodes between the Jeff one and this one is I think with Mel Robbins, it's, it's, uh, she just. I think she just talks about each style, mm -hmm. uh, whereas I think Jeff and what's her, what's Sarah. her, Sarah, talk a little bit more in detail about not just what the styles are, but like, how can you really apply them to your relationship? So mm -hmm. they talk about a lot of relationship stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, but both, both are good, um, but maybe you're looking for something in particular. So just wanted yeah. to clarify what, to make sure you are mindful with your time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this has been a wonderful. Mm, uh, I felt like I was in therapy, but in a good, I, was, I felt safe. <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> and we're very excited for your future, your career. You're welcome okay. here anytime you want. If oh, you want to come back thank you, and yeah. you want to talk about topic, we yeah. would love it. Um, okay. But we're very excited for you yeah. and um, very proud of you. And uh, yeah, just I learned so much today and I'm really hoping that people out there um, learned as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I love your coffee chat. Oh, good. <laughs> you like the donuts here? Yes, delicious She already had a bite. Well. She can't not show you, but. <laughs> All right. All right, well. That's a wrap on Gabby. Cheers. That's a wrap on Gabby. <laughs>